Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much, Teddy. I'm gonna bring that back. It is the end of the Ask Me Anywhere. I put that image up there because I want you to go back and pause it and look at it. I'm gonna answer a couple of questions today, but today I'm gonna talk a lot about hormones and testosterone in particular. This is really, really important. Anyone out there who knows somebody who's getting testosterone injections or taking testosterone or hormones, please share this video with them. This is really important information because I'm seeing more and more and more and more people that who are taking these hormones and have no idea of the long-term effects of them and the research that is gone into that is really very interesting. I'm gonna answer the questions first and then I'm gonna get into that real quick. Okay, so first of all, uh, for those of you who might be watching for the first time, this is the time where you can ask us questions about your health, nutrition, anything that has to do with your health and we're gonna give you the best answers we can possibly give you in this time. If you have a question that you want to uh, submit to us like this, just email us at info at strong on health and we will answer those questions for you. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna answer this question. Uh, someone wrote in and said, if I'm someone who doesn't eat a lot of fish due to hating seafood, should I be taking a fish oil supplement? It's a great question, thanks for asking it. Um, the things that I think about for those who are not eating seafood are not necessarily just the fish oil. You can actually get a lot of the essential fatty acids that you need from your other foods. And if you are someone who is making sure you wanna get those, I would definitely focus on your chia seeds and all those other foods that are gonna be high in the omega-3s. We have to remember that a lot of times we are getting too much omega-6s, not enough omega-3s. I think the average is something like 20 to one ratio and the average American diet when we want it to be one to one. So the fish oil, when, when people are thinking in terms of that, they're thinking and trying to get that omega-3, which is very rich in the fish oil. So if you do want to make sure that you're checking that box off, for that reason, a fish oil would be a good idea. Now there's a caveat on that. A lot of fish oils out there are really not very good quality. So I'd be very careful in examining the quality of it. One of the things that I look for is the sourcing on it. I look for, do they know what's actually in this? It blows me away how many times I'll turn over and look at a fish oil and I say, eh, it came from anchovies or, or these, it, there's an and or. I don't understand how there's an and or on what's in this pill. It's either it, it's in there or it's not. So if they don't know that, I mean these types of things are the questions that I'm asking before I'm, I'm ingesting it. So um, quality control is really important on it. But more importantly to that, uh, what I want people to understand is that there is a real big need for iodine and a lot of people aren't getting iodine in their diet and most of the iodine rich foods are going to be your seafoods. So if you're not going to eat the fish, I would encourage you to look at maybe incorporating some of the seaweed into your diet, like that nori, you can put it in on your salad, you can mix it into your life in a little bit. Just be mindful of getting enough iodine in your diet in a food form. You can also get it on uh, things like strawberries that are grown on the coast that can be rich in that, and cranberries and fruits and things like that. So check that out. Make sure that you are getting an iodine source. Phosphorus is something we're talking a lot about this month. That is our mineral focus of the month. And a lot of people don't realize that you have to have phosphorus for energy production. And seafood is another good source for that. So somebody who comes to me and they say, I don't eat seafood, I'm gonna be examining their diet to make sure that they're getting their phosphorus in other ways. Uh, one of the best ways that I like to encourage people to get that is through, of course, raw nuts and seeds, but they have to be sprouted to make sure that you're getting that. But without sprouting, you can lose up to 80% of that nutrient in there. So make sure that you're getting them sprouted. Vitamin B6 is also something that tends to be missing from the standard American diet, and that is something you're gonna be getting from a lot of these seafoods, so that's another one to be paying attention to. Hint, you can also get that from your nuts and seeds. Potassium is actually um, gonna be a decent amount in a lot of seafood, so also potassium is something to pay attention to for those of you out there who are wanting to make sure that you're getting all the nutrients you need. And finally, vitamin D. We all have so many people with vitamin D issues, and one of the best ways you can get it in a whole food source is through fish. So just check those off if you're somebody who doesn't eat seafood. Make sure you're getting them in other ways so that you're not creating a deficit in yourself. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Now, last week we had somebody email us a question about having a struggle with weight loss and I said, send me what you're eating and I'll go through it point by point and we'll try to figure that out. And I'm so happy you did this because it gave us so many opportunities to improve upon this person's uh, diet. So I'm really excited to go through this. And there's another question I have for, that came in for someone who's been on keto for almost two months and have lost only 12 pounds. I even increased my exercise. I still have more to lose, but now my weight loss is plateauing. 
I'm gonna come back to that question a little bit, but I'm also gonna ask that person to do the same thing that the other person did, because when we actually see what someone is genuinely eating, that gives us so much more power to be able to help them, instead of just assuming that they are doing keto right. And a lot of people are doing keto in a way that could not be fully supporting their health. So for that person who submitted that question, please do the same thing that this individual did, and I'll be happy to go through your diet with you a sample of a day. So this person says, um, thank you for answering my question today and um, be willing to look at what I'm eating. Below is what I've eaten in a day for, to follow a nutrition plan. They did a body comp test through CG and based on the results, in order to fuel their workouts, the trainer told them to eat 2,200 calories with macros of 40% protein, 30% carbs, and 30% fat. Now, I don't mean to be contrary to the trainer in any way, shape, or form, but if it were me and I was looking at this, number one, if you are going to be losing weight and weight loss is your goal. Now, we're always trying to make sure people are getting healthy and losing weight in a healthy way, but in order to achieve that, you do need to have some form of calorie deficit. Now, I don't want you to go too low. I want you to get enough calories. And the reason I mention this is because the next statement says, I really struggle eating this much food, so, um, I only ate 1,900 calories on this day with the 40, 30, 30 macros. And I'm realizing there's not enough veggies here. I love that they put that because as soon as you do write down what you're eating, you, it's very confrontational. You see exactly how low your veggie intake is and that can be helpful for everybody. So I would actually change this around because they are struggling to hit that calories because they're doing too much uh, percentage in carbohydrates. I, the 40% protein, I could, I could stick with that for a little while personally, but I would personally try to get the carbohydrates down a lot lower, probably 10, 10%, and I would increase the fat, the remainder of that, up to 50%. And so many people are still struggling with this concept that eating more fat is gonna give you a whole problem, but obviously those calories are gonna go up and you're gonna get a lot more nutrient density. This person, if they came in and work with me, the number one thing I would say to them is, look, you're, you may be getting not enough fat, not enough fiber, and possibly too much sugar. So the sugar I would be looking at. For breakfast, they had a shake with spinach, blueberries, uh, a powdered peanut butter, and chocolate protein powder. I would love to examine and see what's in that protein powder. There may be sugar in there, so just keep an eye out for that. Read those labels really carefully. Then they're doing a half of a cinnamon raisin English muffin. Okay, so this is something I would definitely try to remove from this equation. If you can't live without an English muffin, let's figure out other things that we can do. But the English muffin is refined carbohydrates. So there is no fiber in there and there is no nutrients beyond just the carbohydrate, which is gonna go straight to sugar. So you're getting another sugar kick. Raisins are actually gonna be giving you a little sugar too. I like raisins. But in this case, if my goal was to try to get healthier and to try to lose a little weight, I would lose the English muffin because um, there's also a lot of other things that are happening there. Not to ruin bread for you guys, but commercially raised grain can be soaked in pesticides and fungicides and herbicides that can mess with your endocrine system. And they're probably using bromine to bake it instead of the iodine. So it can give you a problem with the other thing we talked about. So there's many reasons why I would avoid that. Now they also did egg whites. And again, I see this a lot because we've been told over time that the egg whites are the thing that you need, but that's just straight protein and you're not getting any of the healthy fat. In the yolk of an egg, there's so many nutrients, so many fat-soluble vitamins. So reevaluate whether or not you can add that in. And if you need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me about egg yolks, I'd be more than happy to go after that with you. So we already see two possibilities of ways that we can improve this. Then they had a snack, non-fat, plain Greek yogurt. Again, so what are they doing removing the fat? The fat has to be in there. You have essential fatty acids. You need the fat. And usually in something like that, check for sugar. There's probably sugar added to that for taste. When they remove the fat that gives you flavor, they're usually adding in sugar. Now with peanut butter. Peanut butter, examine your peanut butter. Uh, I wanna make sure that there's no trans fats in there. You'd be amazed at how many partially hydrogenated oils or fully hydrogenated oils are added to peanut butters. So keep an eye on that. Make sure that your ingredients are just peanuts and salt and do try to make sure that it's organic. And oftentimes there's a lot of sugar added to peanut butter too. So look at that label and double check it. Now, I personally wouldn't want someone to always do peanut butter. I would look at other nut butters. Artisana is gonna be in next month's uh, subscription box and they do a great pecan butter. They have almond butter. There's some great options and we'll show you a little bit about that a little bit later. Uh, so then a lunch, they had ground turkey patty, and I'm pretty sure the turkey is because they're looking for low fat. Again, they're trying to be lean on that. 
they did brown rice. Brown rice is possibly this much better than white rice, but it's also gonna be a refined food, which is gonna strip out all the fiber, it's gonna strip out all the nutrients. So if I'm gonna do rice, it's gonna be wild and organic. And again, I don't mean to ruin rice for everybody, but there's a lot of contaminated rice out there with something called arsenic. So I would definitely examine the sourcing on my rice before I ate too much rice. Broccoli, nicely done. And then there's a chocolate protein shake with water. Again, I wanna know what's in that. Is there sugar? Is there a sweetener? Is there sucralose? Is there aspartame? Those are things that I would definitely pull from this equation if I could. And again, there's no fiber in there and there's no fat. Then for dinner, we did blue corn taco shell. Corn is a starch and starches are gonna be working against you in your efforts right now. Plus, a lot of the corns are not the best quality out there. And again, ground turkey, trying to keep the fat low. Cheese, I wanna know about the quality of the cheese. Refined beans, I do like beans, I just wanna make sure that you're getting all the other nutrients in there. So hopefully that's helpful. There's a lot of opportunity to change things around. Really examine, make sure that there isn't excess sugar in here, and find ways to educate yourself about how fat does not make you fat. Eating fat is doing so many other things to your body. It is essential because you need it for your brain, you need it for way more than I can get into right now. Whereas the carbohydrates turning into sugar are creating that spike in insulin. So last month we talked a lot about fat builders and fat burners. And so back to this first person's um, question about being on keto, those are the things we have to examine. Are you keeping mind of the fat building hormones? And those fat building hormones we talked about are gonna be cortisol. Cortisol is a result of too much stress. Is your stress level way high? That would be one thing that I would try to get under check because that could be working against you and making sure that you haven't stuck to this plateau. Uh, sleep is another one I always wanna examine. Make sure you're getting ample sleep, quality sleep, and if that's a struggle, let me know. And finally, estrogen. Okay, so estrogen can be a fat grower. It can be one of the fat builders, and we have to be very careful about estrogen. As we've learned, there is estrogen being pumped into chickens and turkeys and all of these animals that are commercially raised. This person eating turkey patty, I would wanna make sure that there's no hormones added to that because that excess of estrogen in there could be a problem for you. And I say this is a problem because we do know this. These are known carcinogens in excess amounts. There is so much research, I'm gonna put the video in again for those of you who don't know that too much estrogen is a very bad thing as evidenced by 70% of all breast cancers being estrogen receptor positive breast cancers. We have to be mindful of where we're getting exposed to estrogen. And so the reason I had put this up for you to watch at the beginning is because what people need to really understand is that testosterone does not stay as testosterone forever. It goes somewhere, it converts, and the arrows show it goes either to DHT which is dihydrotestosterone, or it goes to estrogens, okay? So the estrogens are going to be going up if you're putting more and more testosterone. It blew my mind. I did exhaustive research on this, trying to figure out who is um, telling everyone it's okay to just keep dumping testosterone. And it's unbelievable that the research out there through the NIH and many other places are examining testosterone to see if it has a negative effect on prostate cancer and cancers which I understand what you're trying to say there, but why are you just looking at testosterone? I have to show you this visual because I'm trying to think of a way to help drive this point home. This water here, let's think this is testosterone. That's great, it's totally fine, and plants need it. This plant right here, it needs water, but, and I poke myself in the eye with it, if I dump this in there and I keep dumping it in there and dumping it in there, too much water is gonna do what? It's gonna drown the frickin' plant. So the testosterone over here is fine, but when it becomes estrogen, it becomes a problem. We do too much more and more and more and more. You're building that, testo that estrogen up and we have to be careful of that. I've had so many people come in and they don't even mention that they're taking testosterone. I have to ferret that out of people and they're struggling with weight loss. They're like, I'm doing everything the same, everything the same. And I finally say, are you taking uh, testosterone? Yes, are you taking something to help clear the estrogen that the testosterone is turning into. And I get a blank look because nobody's thinking of that or at least thinking of that when they're getting the testosterone. So if you are taking testosterone, it is hyper important for you to be aware that it is not staying as testosterone. It is going somewhere. 
You have to know this. And if it's going to estrogen, you have to make sure that that estrogen is leaving the body or being processed out the way that nature intended it to. There are so many people with constipation issues that will increase that estrogen because it's just not leaving the body. Fiber is gonna be super important. Cruciferous vegetables. If you take nothing away from this video that you're watching, if you are taking testosterone or any hormones, make sure you're getting adequate fiber, make sure you're getting adequate cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, make sure you're getting those on a daily basis. Your liver absolutely needs the help of those vegetables to process out those hormones. Please, please, please consider this. And I know a lot of people have an emotional attachment to this testosterone because it has made them feel so good. And I completely get it. Testosterone is awesome. We're also ignoring the fact that if the testosterone is low, we are not answering the question as to why the testosterone is going low. And before you tell me it's because you're getting old, it's not because you're getting old. There are other reasons that that is happening. There is function and you have to understand the full function. And there's many reasons that can contribute to it. And if any one of those is not getting corrected or you don't address it, whatever that deficit is or problem is, is gonna show up as a problem somewhere else. Just putting testosterone in there to make you feel better now does not correct that problem. Please remember that. And please more importantly remember that that testosterone, if it is going to too much estrogen, is going to be a huge problem. Now I know some people are given something called DIM to help them with it, and that is helpful, but it's not the whole picture. You do need more than that. You need to get the whole foods in there to get the estrogen out of the situation. And so, again, keep in mind that I'm not demonizing testosterone or estrogen, but what I'm concerned about is the excesses of the estrogen which we're seeing all over the place. So it's not a unique thing, and if you're putting more testosterone in there, you are filling up that plant ultimately with more and more and more water and you are drowning it. We are drowning in a sea of estrogen right now, so we have to be careful not to be putting excess in there that our body cannot be handling. So please share this information with those uh, that you love that are taking hormones, understanding that it just doesn't stay there, it goes somewhere. And even though the research says that the testosterone's not a problem, that's fine and it's great because testosterone's great. And so is estrogen, but that testosterone that becomes too much estrogen is a problem. And I know I'm repeating myself over and over because I have to repeat this over and over. Please pay attention to this. It could be a problem down the road in a way that you don't want it to be. And if you do something about it now, you take a little prevention, it's gonna make a massive difference. Please check out where it goes. Know where things happen and what's happening in your body. Okay, I hope that was helpful for those of you out there. Remember that there's always something you can do and there's always a way to understand why you got to where you are when it comes to these testosterone levels being low. If we don't have any questions out there now, no, please keep them emailing in. Okay, I don't know if we see one in there. Um, I know that there's, there's so much more I could say about this, but I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't wanna beat you over the head with it. But please be mindful when you are putting things into this equation, it doesn't just stay there. Your body reacts to it and your body's always reacting. Oh, there was one last thing, I apologize. Yes, okay, so side effects. Um, actually, I was approached by a filmmaker who is going to be talking about uh, the side effects of medications, and they were asking me specifically about um, which medications, you know, and, and consulting on that. And one of the ones that came up was actually Accutane. And there is a horrific list of side effects on that. And I always just want people to understand if there are side effects, we still have to figure out how to achieve what we're looking at without having to rely on that something that's gonna cause these dangerous side effects. And there, there's almost always a way to do that. Now, in this case, there, there, the words in there were so awful. We're talking about creating congenital birth disorders and people who are taking these medications. So really, really look, you may not understand just how horrible these side effects can be. So be mindful of those, check those out. When that films comes out, I will definitely share it with you all so that we can do that in a fun, an exciting way. Fun. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. If you have any more questions, keep them coming in tonight. We are gonna be in mineral, mineral wells. We're talking about energy. We're gonna be talking about if you are stimulating yourself and you're still low energy, what is it that you need to give your body to respond to the stimuli? Your body has to have all of these things and that's the important question is get to the bottom of it. All right, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you. Please share and like this video um, and have a great,